Welcome to the Extended Bench, your YouTube home for all things rugby league news, analysis, history, and opinion. Subscribe so you don't miss a video and give us a thumbs up. The Extended Bench is part of the Rugby League Monthly Network, which includes a monthly online digital magazine available at rugbyleaguemonthly.com and the daily podcast Rugby League Daily, which airs during the NRL season. All links are down below in the description. Let's get into it. They're now the reigning champions, or should that be champions, according to Nathan Cleary's new tattoo? The Panthers will be hunted in 2022, and much of how they travel throughout the new season will depend on how they handle being the team that everyone wants to beat. There's not going to be a lot of change to their starting 17. They've really only lost a couple of top-line players, and that being Kurt Capewell, Paul Momorowski, and Matt Burton. Burton and Capewell are obviously their starting players. They're in the starting 13 a lot of the season, even if Burton was actually a half playing in the centres. While Momorowski made himself a pretty reliable starting player, so much so that the Roosters have gone and brought him back to the eastern suburbs. Now, the issue I see as slightly, you know, raising its head throughout the year is actually a bit of their thin squad underneath that top 17. So alongside Burton's departure, who obviously that removes a, uh, a 5 8 or a half required during Origin, as we saw last season, but we've also seen Naden leave alongside Moborowski, leaving their centre stocks a little shorter than what they were last year, especially if Stephen Crichton finds himself in the State of Origin squad, and he has been pretty close in the past. And that's where I see the crunch happening for Penrith. Origin will likely see a few players out heading into camp, and alongside that, you've got uh, injuries during the season, possible COVID positives, and whatever happens around that could leave their squad a little bit thin in the middle of the year. However, it's not the first time a squad has had to deal with Origin players and, you know, squads being a little bit thin during the middle of the year. You know, we've seen it with Melbourne, we've seen it with the Broncos. They find a way through. Now, obviously, Penrith has tried to mitigate some of these issues. They've obviously got Mitch Kenny as a backup hooker, and they've also gone and bought Sean O'Sullivan to shore up their half stocks while also keeping Jamin Salmon on the books. And the former Eel and Shark was a known 5'8 during his junior career, did play a bit uh, for the Eels in the centres and off the bench, but he can do a job if required. And taking all that into consideration, I don't think Penrith's issues are actually going to be on the players' front or, you know, in their squad and how it develops. If they do have any hiccups, it's likely going to be down to an inability to exceed their previous couple of seasons. If you're standing still in the NRL, you're going backwards fast, and the Panthers have set pretty high standards in the past two years, and it's paid off for them in droves. I mean, they're the defending premiers. But teams very rarely make three consecutive grand finals. The last team to do so was Melbourne's salary cap cheating squads of 2006 to 2009. Before that, it was the Roosters of 2002 to 2004 under Ricky Stewart. Interestingly, neither of those teams won back-to-back competitions. Obviously, the Roosters completed their back-to-back premiership wins in 2018 and 2019, but they didn't play three deciders in a row. If Penrith want to be back-to-back champs, they're going to have to do something that hasn't been done since the Raiders of 1989 to 1991. Play three grand finals in a row and manage two consecutive premierships. Now, Canberra did it back in 1989 and 1990, and they lost the 1991 grand final to Penrith. So there is absolutely no doubt that the Panthers will be a force in 2022. They possess a very strong team with firepower in all the right places. They will likely experience a few bumps during Origin, but I think their squad is strong enough to deliver them a top four finish. So my prediction, they'll finish third, but bow out in the preliminary final. 